I want you to tell God the Father this word of today. Let it release strength into me. Let this word be a divine conveyor of strength in my life. Let the word of today convey strength and power into me, O oh God. Speak to God and tell God, the Father, I refuse to sit down to get up without being fed. Feed me today with the bread of heaven. Feed me today with the bread of heaven. Let this word turn my life around forever. Establish my destiny by the ministry of this word today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father in heaven, we bless you because you are God that changes not. Your word is settled in heaven. Say forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalm 119, verse 89. Father, indeed, your word is settled in heaven. I pray, O oh God, that by virtue of this word of today, you will say to everyone here Amen. in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mighty God, I pray that the ministry of this word, Lord, will bring about divine settlement Amen. in the lives of your people. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everyone watching and listening online, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that the power at work on this altar also reflect in their lives. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Please speak your word, Amen. bless your word, Amen. and please bless your church. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The testimony of the death of the cross, part four. The testimony of the, the death of the cross, part four. Let me just say this. That the month 11, 11th month, that is the month of November, is a very critical month. What makes it critical? When I say critical, it is a month that man should look into. That man should should do everything possible. As if he or she prepares to enter the new year. In what sense? The sense that after November, then we enter the, the last month, the month of December. So now, the, the month of December is that month made for preparation to gather spiritual momentum in order to be launched into the new year. So now, November is that month that should open your spiritual understanding to how to prepare or to what to prepare for as you enter the month of December. The death of the cross carries testimonies. It carries testimonies. It carries testimonies. One of them is the that the blood gave man over Satan. That is a very powerful testimony. Through the death of the cross, we also encounter the blood of the cross. Today, by God's grace, we'll be rounding up the series 
I will be looking into the subtopic the liberation power of the blood of the cross. The liberation power of the blood of the cross. The blood of the cross. Last week we dealt with the testifying power of the blood of the cross. That the blood has the power to testify. That is to stand as a living witness to, to everything that the, that the death of the cross accomplished. We discussed what the death of the cross accomplished. I will say that everything that the death of the cross accomplished for a man has witness. Has witness. What is the witness that you are a legal resident in a, in a foreign country. When you have your green card, that is a witness. So when you have that witness, no devil from any government can question you. So now that is what the blood also stands for. That with the blood of the cross, there is no devil that can question what the death accomplished for you and I. And today we want to look at the second power of the blood of the cross. And that is the liberation power of the blood of the cross. Liberation power of the blood of the cross. Zechariah 9 9 verse Zechariah 9 and Verse 11. The book of Zechariah 9, chapter and verse 11. The book of Zechariah 9, verse 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the peace when in a snow water. By the blood of thy covenant, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners from the pit where there is no water. Now, the blood of the covenant is the blood of the cross. The blood of, of the cross is the, is the blood shed by Christ on, on the cross of Calvary. We told us that. Calvary is an altar on, on its own. Altar is a place whereby you make sacrifices. And what empowers an altar is the blood shed therein. So now Calvary or Golgotha is an altar where Jesus sacrificed his own life where he shed his own blood and everywhere you see bloodshed there is covenant anywhere you see bloodshed there is covenant anywhere blood is shed there is covenant so therefore that scripture said the blood of thy covenant the blood of the covenant hmm. that is when he shed the blood covenant was instituted there was a covenant because of the bloodshed so now this covenant is mightily powerful to silence any voice of strange covenant that may be binding on any child of God. You don't address covenant by water. You address covenant by blood because the blood is the root of covenant. 
Why the breach of power of the block that we are examining today? Why the power of the blood liberating man? There can never be bondage without covenant. Without covenant. When they put a man in bondage, when a man is put in bondage, there is a covenant binding on that person. When a man is in bondage, there is a covenant binding on him. Please understand these revelations. Because the sole essence of putting that covenant is to make sure that the person remains in that bondage forever. The devil will never put a man in bondage with the hope to see that person be released in the near future. The devil will never put a man in bondage with the hope of seeing that person being set free. Never. If you put a man in bondage, the reason is to see that person die there. That is the essence. So Satan will never put a man in bondage and expect to see him set free. And he will do that by putting covenant on that person's life. On that person's life. How does he do this? How does he do this? He makes covenant with diverse spirits on behalf of the person. For instance, if a man always falls sick, Every time sickness, every time sickness, how old is he now? 60 years old. She can, he can never locate a day of peace in his life. There is a binding covenant upon him. Satan has initiated a covenant with the spirit of infirmity. Isaiah 28 listening to this Isaiah 28 and verse 18 Isaiah 28 and verse 18 28 and, and verse 18 and your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with her shall not stand when the overflowing cause shall pass through, then ye shall be thrown down by it. Now, this is a warfare between light and darkness on behalf of someone. Now, let me put myself in a place of a man praying for somebody else. I'm praying for Mr. A. Mr. A is in bondage. And I'm addressing some parts of darkness. Addressing them, I locate this scripture. That your covenant with death shall be disannulled. That is, I'm speaking to those spirits that have made covenant with death because of Mr. X. Satan is the head of powers of, of darkness. But he can't do everything at all. Some spirits are in charge of afflicting people with, with sickness, with failure, with delay. All kinds, different categories of afflictions you can ever mention is being monitored by a certain spirit. So now Satan will make covenant with those spirits on behalf of the person. So now, for instance here, 
there is a covenant of death here and of hell of hell in, in the sense that the person will never be delivered from smoking, from drinking, from fornication, from adultery. That his life has been bound to go to hell. Those spirits will always be after him or her. They won't want to leave the person. When you see someone can that cannot help himself but but by sleeping around there is a demon holding his life and the aim is to take him to hell at the end of the day so now I said there is no bondage without a covenant so the enemy will institute covenant so as to make sure that the person remains in that body forever now it takes covenant to attack a covenant because the essence of applying the blood of the covenant is to secure your liberation to secure your liberation talking about bondage which we are, we are talking about liberation we are talking about bondage Liberation from a certain bondage, from a certain bondage. So now, the blood of the covenant is that blood of the cross. Because the cross, the Calvary, the blood, everything speaks of covenant. So now, when a covenant is to be broken of a mass life, the blood of the cross must be applied. Because that is the blood of the eternal covenant. You can't break any covenant without the application of the blood of the cross. No covenant is, is ever broken. Except the blood of, of the cross is engaged. Is engaged. Is engaged. Now as a man in Christ, because when you believe in the blood of the cross, that means that you are a Christian. You are a child of God. You believe in the death of Jesus and his resurrection. You believe in his second coming. You believe in the rapture. Now, but you can be a believer of Christ and still remain in some bondage, which you are, which you ought not to be. And what is it, the bondage that applies to most Christians today, most children of God today? The bondage that that applies to them. You want to look at this bondage and how the liberation power of, of the blood can come to their rescue. Number one bondage. Ancestral governing power. The bondage of ancestral governing power. The bondage of ancestral governing power. There is no man on earth that has no family. No man came into this world on his own. You came through someone. And because you came through someone, you, you came through a bloodline. You came through a bloodline. And because you came through a bloodline, you are prone to inherit everything that that, that, that blood carries. <laughs> and because you are prone to inherit those things, you are subject to the power 
governing those things. Every man that came to the world came through someone. Please know that. And everyone that came through someone came through a bloodline. And you can't come through a bloodline without in, in anything, everything that that blood carries. And as long as you inherit those things, you are subject to the governing powers in that family. And this is where the issue is. Now, what does the bloodline carry? The bloodline carries nothing but curses. There is no family limit on earth whereby you will see ancestors that have never committed sins in equities. God will never speak if he doesn't see. Exodus 20 and verse 5. The sins, the, the iniquities of the father shall be shall be demanded upon the children, children able to the fourth generations. Lamentations 5 and verse 7. Our fathers have sinned. They have committed iniquities. We are no more. So now, because even though you are a believer, you have a root somewhere. You need the liberation of the blood. You have a root somewhere. Some people will say, oh, there was nothing like idolatry. I was born in Germany, Western world. There was nothing like idolatry. Well, but your ancestors were, in, were into hardcore pornography. There was cause there. They were into witchcraft practices. Causes are there. They are shed in, in, in blood of the innocent ones. Because they have the ability to use guns. Causes are, are there. And you are born into that family. You are you are now swimming into the bloodline. So everything comes in you. But there is hope. And that hope is in the blood of the cross of Calvary. Now, before a man can ever fulfill the divine agenda on earth, that area of ancestral governing power must be dealt with. You know, Bible says that the people of a man's house are his enemies. Do you know what that means? It doesn't mean that if you have, if you are you married, you have husband and, and, and your children. Oh, Bible says that the people of my house are my enemies. So now, my children are my enemies, right? Ah, my husband, that means that you're, you're my, no, 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 no. That's not what the Bible is saying. Your husband is not your, your enemy. Your, where, it might be like your, 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 your enemy because we have, we have seen places where, whereby husband, because he wanted to make money, sacrifice his wife as he was. But on, on a certain day, when you have family, husband, wife, children, it doesn't mean that they are your enemies. Now, the people of a man's house are his enemies. What exactly is what I will say here? It means that the house you came from, the family you came out from, are your first enemies. The demons there are your first enemies you must first of all take care of. It means that if you if you don't overcome those ones, you can't overcome those ones that are rising your life at work. 
before you can ever fulfill divine agenda the enemies of your house must first of all be dealt with now do you know why what God told Joshua uh, Gideon let's see the book of Judges Judges chapter 6 Judges chapter 6 Judges 6 Judges is after the book of Joshua Joshua is after the book of the Deuteronomy. Now, I want to open our eyes to this. Don't forget, we are looking at the liberation power of the blood of the cross. Why you must be liberated from this bondage of ancestral governing power. This is the first power you must conquer before anything can happen in your life. Now, Gideon was a man like you and I. His family was besieged. His nation was besieged. And God wanted to send him on a divine mission. The way God has sent you On a mission on earth because you are not in this world for fun. Every man on earth has been set to fulfill a part, a certain mission. Every man on earth has been ordained to fulfilling a particular mission on earth. On earth, you are not here just to eat chicken and rice. You are here to fulfill a mission. And before that mission can ever be fulfilled, the enemy of your house, those ancestral governing powers must be conquered. That is the first area that you must look at critically. Now, it was time that Gideon was about to step in into his divine agenda. The angel of God appeared to him. Judges chapter 6. Chapter 6. And verse 12. Verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of the Lord. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and deliver us into the hands of the Midianites. 14. And the Lord spoke unto him and said, Go in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of Midianite. Have not I sent thee? This is this is this is the mission, the assignment that God gave Gideon. He gave him the ministry of deliverance. That I have sent you as a savior. As a savior, go and save. Go and save my people from the hand of the Midianites. Go and save them. Go and save them. Now, do you know that you and I have been ordained a savior? You are a savior planted in your house, in your family, in your territory, in your district. You are in Christ the Savior as a little Savior. You are in Christ as a Savior, as a little Savior. So now you have an assignment to do in your family, in your household. You are not just there to occupy your family alone, but you are there to rescue your household the same way God sent Joseph as a Savior. 
to save his family. Then God has sent me ahead of you to prepare a posterity. Hallelujah, somebody. Now, you have that agenda upon your life to rescue your family from poverty. To stand against the threat of a devil ravaging your household, your family. Now, see the book of Obadiah 1 verse 21. Thank you, Father. Obadiah 1 verse 21. That is the last verse. Before the book of Jonah, get to the book of Daniel, open up to Hosea, to Joel, to Amos, then Obadiah. Obadiah 1 and verse 21. 21 verse. Obadiah has just one chapter. Verse 21. It said, And Saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's, and saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the mount of Esau. So now God's attention, God's, God's motive is, is to raise, is to raise saviors, and you are a savior. You are in your family for a purpose. God made you to be the firstborn for a purpose. God made you to be the lastborn for a purpose. God made you to be an intercessor for a purpose. That you can bring out your family. That you can prepare for them a posterity. You remember what Joseph said? He said, God sent me before you to prepare a posterity. Now, the same assignment that God gave Gideon. You are still in the book of Judges 6. Now, God now said, it is time, go and liberate my people. You know, they are God's people. Now, when you consider what Gideon said here, he said, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? The same thing that believers say, if God is truly there, why am I going, why am I going through all these things? If God is really there for me, why am I going through all these things? God is there for you. But, you need to rise up in his power and destroy the enemies of your house that is the ancestral governing powers ancestral governing powers ancestral governing powers it is quite unfortunate that you were born there 